What impact do you think the Raonic match and the late finish, or early if you like, will have on Nishikori's chances today? Take a seat quickly, please. Thank you. Send your response to at US Optimum 2014. Time to get underway. Vavrenka, reigning Australian Open champion. Wimbledon quarter finalist, hoping to be a US Open semifinalist for the second straight year. Will serve from the north end, and they are underway in Ash Stadium. Oh! Law 15. This is a bit of a different matchup uh, Vavrenka faces today 15. with Nishikori. You know, Robredo is a lot more patient from the baseline. Isn't really in a rush to move up, take the ball early, and open up the court with angles and, and offensive ground strokes. Nishikori is that. So if, he's, if Stan is not ready to defend a little bit, he's going to find himself in a little bit of trouble. Thirty. Saw a lot of that early in the Robredo match. Vavrinka out of the court, behind the baseline, leaning back, trying to rip some big forehands and backhands up the line. It's not the most high percentage play. Immediately forced to save a break point. Yeah, Robredo was able to keep that backhand weapon of Vavrinka really just off balance. Stan was not able to use it as effectively as he prefers. Was able to save six of eight break points the Spaniard held against Favrenka. Going to keep Tommy at bay. Advantage, Favrenka. And already under duress, finds himself having to save one, but he's a point away from getting on the board first. And that will please Stan. And using and the forehand to Favrenka. drive through. No reply from Nishikori, and the hold secured for Vavrenka for one love. One of the interesting aspects we were talking about, Taylor, prior to the match is the fact that Vavrenka didn't have to play in his match in the third round against Blaz Kavcic due to right foot injury. And you include that with the four hours and 19 minutes that Nishikori needed to finish up his marathon, literally against Milos Raonic. The interesting note of, this tournament between these two is that despite one less round and all that time Nishikori spent on the court, only one hour and 27 minutes difference in total time for the tournament. And that would normally be nothing if, if we're in the quarters. But unfortunately, the big chunk of time for that with Nishikori came just, you know, a couple... One round prior. Exactly. And a couple of days ago. That was great defense from Valvrenka right there. He was scrambling a little bit behind the baseline. He didn't have to hit the ball wide. When you're on defense, depth is everything. He hit that ball right next to the baseline, down the middle of the court. about that, the fact that it's the prior round to coming into this matchup for Nishikori that is why there are so many 
concerns for how he'll fare today. And for those who are curious, it really did finish yesterday morning. The match with Raonic finished at 2.26 a.m. He was in press at 3.15 a.m., got back to the hotel 10 minutes after 4, and finally got to bed and to sleep at 5.30 a.m. yesterday. Woke up at 1 in the afternoon, came to the site at 2, practiced 3.15, then back to the hotel for rest and recovery. That's not normally how someone would prepare the day before their quarterfinal in a major. Well, it's not <laughs> ideal preparation, that's for sure. But that's what happens here under the lights at the U.S. Open. How many times a year do we see that happening? It happens more often than not. To be fair, it is a record-tying latest finish here at the U.S. Open on the dot with two other matches. Remarkably, two hours yeah. or 2.26 a.m. is the stop time for the latest finish for matches, and that ties Cole Schreiber and Isner, as well as Vilander and Pernfors from 1993 for the latter, and 2012 for Isner and Cole Schreiber. Remarkable. You know, somewhere out there, there were USTA officials saying, no, 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 we need an American to be sharing that record in some form. And other fans for Nishikori and for Raonic are like, go to the towel one more time, set the record. You just need one more minute. It wasn't to be. And Vavrenka in prime position to jump out to Love, see if he can convert his first break point, as Nishikori was unable. Just long off the backhand of Avranka after a quality exchange between the two. That was just some big hitting. Clutch playing by Kay, fighting off a lot of those deep, heavy ground strokes that Vavrinka has. I think Vavrinka and Burdick are the two guys in the top ten that hit the ball overall, in the overall game, the biggest. If you measure serve, forehand, backhand, nobody else really matches up. Nishikori does not want to see too many points like this, these last couple. He's not going to win this match if he has to scramble for the next couple of hours. He needs to make sure that he's the one on offense. Bob Rankin doing well to extend the sidelines and put Nishikori on the run. As you mentioned, Kai had to do a full 360 to try to get to a neutral spot, and Bob Rinka said, you're handcuffed, you're done. Another break point. Stepping in, the forehand delivers the blow for the break. And in eight minutes, Stan Bavrenka out in front to love. Well, your comments, questions are starting to pour in at US Optimum 2014. I support Nishikori. It will be a tough one, four sets for Vavrenka. Back and forth they go. More questions about the fitness of Nishikori, MJ Imran wants to know how difficult it is to recover from a marathon tennis match. And what, what is the process, the process that goes through that? Well, it, it's extremely difficult. I've played a couple five-setters in my career, but the, the 
big, the best picture I could paint, I guess, would be when I was here actually at the U.S. Open, I was 15, playing in the juniors. And uh, I got the good fortune of hitting with Carlos Moya, and he just finished a five-setter the day before. And if I hit a ball two feet away from Moya, he would not move for it. And you're talking about one of the fittest guys back then that was playing tennis. And it's just, it, you know, from my perspective, it's, it's really hard. And, and you just have to make sure that you are doing something. You don't want to just sit in bed and let all that lactic acid and blood pool in your legs. You've got to get on the stationary bike. You've got to do some light exercise just to flush it out. Ice baths are huge, you know, to push all the uh, old blood out of the legs. And then once you get out, you go jump into something hot and flush in some good new blood. But ultimately, you know, you can do all the tricks in the world. A five-setter is simply just tough. End of story. And you also take that into consideration <laughs> with the conditions that Nishikori was playing in two days ago. It was very humid over the course of the last four days. This is the first time since Saturday that there's really been a break, and it's very dry. It's warm, mind you, very hot in the sunlight. Temperatures in the low 90 degrees Fahrenheit range. And another thing that goes into the recovery there is I guarantee you Coach Michael Chang Nisha Corey's coach was in that referee's office begging for a night match, just that an extra few hours to prepare and recover. But it's pretty tough to give up on a Djokovic Murray night match. No question. It was a final here at the U.S. Open two years ago. In fact, it's the first time they're not meeting in a final in more than two years. Their last three meetings between Nole and Andy have been for the title of a major. Went out a major. And Bavrenka does and get his hold. Bavrenka. Considerably easier time. And a three-love start. Bavrenka Opening set, men's quarterfinals. Kani Shikori serving love three. Opening set hasn't got off to a particularly strong start as Stan Bavrenka has marched out taking 14 of the first 22 points in all three games. A little more in line with what Kay would like to do, and he's helped out by the short reply from Vavrenka. And you heard Vavrenka say, no, that's not <laughs> what I want. Don't drop those short. And he's done such a good job keeping the ball deep. Seems, Taylor, that some of our viewers, and by the way, don't forget to tell us where you're watching from in the world. That includes India, Nigeria, represented in some of the tweets we received. They feel that it's more between the ears than the body physically. Krishna Harris says, I think it is the mental toughness that counts. Look at Malfi's versus Dimitrov. Jahan Mirza says these players are professionals and incredibly fit. I don't think that Nishikori should have any problems. They train for it. It is true. Bo both things. I mean, both things have aspects of truth. But uh, to say that it's solely just between the ears and there's no physical impact out there whatsoever, I think history would show that's not the case. You know, there's a lot of physical demand on these players. Yeah, I'd be naive to think that that sort of physical exertion over that course of time wouldn't have some sort of lingering effect. Maybe not impacting things majorly. It certainly would have to have some sort of carryover. I mean, that's part of the difficulty, isn't it? That's why majors can be such a struggle. You have to win seven matches over the course of either, well, 14 or 15 days in the case of the U.S. Open this year. But to put together that sort of back forth day in, day out to be able to win the trophy, that's part of the endurance test. And another, you know, to address the second one, these players train for it. Absolutely. They train for it 100%. You know what they can't train for? 
the mental and emotional stress of playing a Grand Slam tournament. And that toll that's taken on the body during these, these big matches is, is not spoken of. I think that's great. You say it. Mental and emotional stress, but it has a physical oh, impact. huge physical impact. Mm -hmm. And Ishikori on the board, finally. He gets the hold of serve. A bit <laughs> muted <laughs> celebration and from both Kai himself and the crowd. But that could be a sign in itself. I mean, the fact that, geez, maybe he's not feeling great. USOpen.org is your source for all information on the 2014 final major on concrete in New York City. There is barely any stone unturned that you can't find out what you need to know about this tournament at usopen.org. And then there's the cynical internet. And I'm not using that as a broad stroke over the, all of the internet. That's actually the name of the person who <laughs> said that. <laughs> Although some would say that's apropos. It says, I think Nishikori will find some energy and take a set off of Renka. So feeling as though there might be an injection of a little bit of energy at some point. But the Vavrenka seems to be the choice at this juncture. Adrenaline can do a lot, and a big point can give you some adrenaline. How many times have we seen Connors light up the crowd to get some adrenaline that way? And it, and it can't happen. The unfortunate part is it's a short-term solution. And in a three out of five set match, that's a long-term problem. 15 seconds. Nishikori missing out on a break opportunity to start off the match against Vavrenka's serve. Trying to work his way to another. 128 miles per hour out wide, third ace. Hoping to rely on some of the success he enjoyed in the previous round. Play similarly in that regard against Robredo, hit 18 aces amongst 75 winners. Oh! you agree with our South African viewer, S. Venter, in saying that Nishikori needs to keep the rally short if he wants to win? Absolutely. It, when you're tired, you certainly don't want to be running side to side. And that, that's a problem. How do you keep the rally short and still play high percentage tennis? You almost have to redline your game and just go for broke at some stage. Vavrenka's playing well um, from 15-30 down. No problem to run off three straight points. And he's still... Pats his lead with a hold for 4-1. First of two quarterfinals taking place on this third day of September. Winner of this match to move through to the semifinals. Face either Novak Djokovic or Andy Murray. Kai Nishikori hoping to entertain the fans and put forth a fight against Stan Wawrinka, which right now is looking like it might be a difficult ask. A bit flat out of the gates, and Wawrinka happy to take advantage, sensing perhaps the vulnerability from the Japanese number one. But many thought Nishikori was down and out against Sraunich. Look how that failed out. Well, we'll see what happens with Kay. You know, right now, obviously, he doesn't look great around the court. He looks a little sluggish. But sometimes when you're tired, you just need a little bit of time to get the engine going. Or the alternative is there's nothing in the tank. Well, a best of five sets. You certainly don't want to come out sprinting and waste any reserves you do have. 
redlining straight away. I just wonder how important it is to try to keep up with Avrenka. He can't really afford to just be a bit lackluster coming out. If Avrenka gets a sense of confidence and really striking his ground strokes well. well. Well, moving is such a big part of the game. If you're going to move a step slow, even a step slow, you're going to look awful out there. And, and especially for someone who hits the ball as big and is as accurate as Vavrenka. If, if K really does have nothing, it's, it's going to look bad. Well, I, I shouldn't say it's going to look bad. It's going to misrepresent his tennis. Because so much of his tennis relies on that foot speed. As does Djokovic. As does Murray. Speaking of probably three of the quickest movers in tennis amongst the active players. It's not really fair. I'll put you on the spot, though, because I've got you right next to me. Amongst those or anyone else missing, who are the best movers in men's tennis? I think you have to separate two different moving categories. I think there are defensive movers that cover a lot of ground and are really tough to get the ball by, a la Monfils. Okay, that's different type of moving than moving in a small box, like an offensive mover, like Nadal. If you want to talk about all-around movers, then it's it's kind of who you said. It's probably Djokovic, probably Djokovic, and probably Djokovic. <laughs> <laughs> With Nishikori on his heels, perhaps, or one of their heels. Yeah, he's up there, no doubt about it. Bjorn Powell seemed to be a big mover. He was quick as lightning, but didn't help his cause too much. Well, and being a great player, unfortunately, it's, it's like making, you know, a pie or something. There's more than one ingredient in the recipe. You know, and moving is just one of the ingredients of a great player. Bjorn had some issues on the serve, had some issues with the forehand back, and was actually pretty good. And he wasn't the biggest guy out there, so there was a, there was a lot of stuff. Yeah, standing 5'9", currently 320 in the world. Speaking about the German, hey Bjorn, you got a shout out during the Nishikori Vavrenka match for your quickness. Vavrenka really starting to settle in since facing Breakpoint is opening service game. Less than a handful of points lost and moving through this seventh game with ease. Forty. By far the easiest hold for Vavrenka. And he continues to mount a solid lead in set one. It's not a great start for Kai Nishikori in so many ways. You saw only getting his first serve in 40% of the time. When he does, He's only winning 50% of those points as well. It just seems as if maybe a fraction slow, and Vavrenka knows this, injects a little bit more pace from the forehand side and starting to try to really run right past Nishikori, literally. And, you know, honestly, looking at the draw, there's pretty much only one guy that Nishikori could play feeling like this and have a chance to win the match. Burdick is going to have too much offense. Chilich is too accurate. He's going to move the ball around the court too much. Federer, too much, too much offense. Djokovic, Murray, too much offense. The only guy that, that is in this round quarters without winning because of offense is Malfis. And he would just, you know, bunt the ball back in the middle of the court and not make Kay's legs pay. <laughs> Ishikori not able to compete in the North American hard court summer swing. Appeared in Washington, D.C. for a moment. It was just a blip before he was sidelined 
for an ankle injury that he suffered in practice with Richard Gasquet in the nation's capital. Oh, and then also the aforementioned cyst removed from his big toe. And that meant time off and away. No competition in the Masters 1000 events, either in Canada or Cincinnati. Rolls into New York as a big question mark as to whether or not he'd really be able to put up to the level he would expect yeah. and the fans who Easy enjoy goal. his tennis would think. But here he is in the quarterfinal. And there's his easiest hold to close well, the gap to 5-3, though the set seems as if it's a foregone conclusion the way Favrenka is serving. So we'll see if Stan can finish off set number one. This has worked out so well for Vavrinka that he's playing Misha Kori after such a long match and not Raonic. Because Raonic doesn't really win because of his movement speed. He's still going to show up, serve massive, get a ton of free points, and his level's not going to drop off as much as Kay's would. Come on, Stan. 30, 30. Trying to motive him, motivate himself further. Just two points from a one set advantage. Did you talk to yourself much when you're on All the, court? the time. Yeah. All the time. You you have no cheer squad out there. You have no coach. You have no nothing. You have to supply the motivation because even though it looks like Stan's moving along fine, a lot of times that's not the case on the inside. You know, you feel like, ooh, I need this. So many times the match is, is closer emotionally than, than what the score would let on. I, I, I can remember walking off the court sometimes, Sergio. winning some matches two and two, and you know the press would say, oh, how was that so easy? And I'm just thinking to myself, man, if I would have lost that one point or those two points, that match would have looked totally different. I changed the dynamic of the match circuit for you in your mind. And a bit is Bob Renka to push Nishikori around. The strategy works as he gets to set point. way to convert a set point. Second double fault of the match for Stan. We'll have a second try. a bit too strong. The intent was there. Vavrenka closing in rapidly, but a bit off balance. And another set point slips away.
the set. Took three tries, but Sam Vavrenka has the opening set in 33 minutes. Six, three. One third of the way to the semifinals for a second straight year. Second Sorry, 6-3, as you see there on the scoreboard before you. <laughs> <laughs> Nishikori serving to start set number two. Five career titles to his credit for Japan's number one, including two this season. They came early, and they were impressive. First one coming indoors in Memphis, Tennessee in February, beating Ivo Karlovich in the final to defend his title from the year before. The second impressive because it was on the clay courts of Barcelona, which even Nishikori said in his post-tournament press conference as champion, I didn't think I was supposed to win this. I thought only Spaniards won this. Hmm. Of course, Rafael Nadal has enjoyed tremendous success there. And he also did reach the final in Madrid. The Masters 1000 event that Nadal did get the better of Kay. That's a fantastic result for him to be able to push to the last day of one of the nine biggest non-major tournaments. Nice touch, and easiest hold Nishiko. by far. Without question for Kay as he begins set number two. Perfect. First game. Hold it low. Now as we look at the stats, I mean, they, they speak for themselves. You know, Kay wasn't really able to do much. His numbers were pretty low across the board, missing the one opportunity. But going back to uh, his tournament results, his good tournament results, I never played Barcelona, but from my understanding, it was actually a very fast clay court tournament. The, the conditions there were pretty quick. Madrid is played in altitude, and Memphis is, is in indoors, and they actually use uh, the women's balls. So it is all three of those good results are on quick surfaces just like the U.S. Open. That's why I just thought throughout the summer and U.S. Open coming to the crescendo, he would have a really, really good chance to do well here. Even better than a quarterfinal. I, I thought he had a legitimate chance, but obviously, you know, nothing ruins theory better than reality, and, and that match against Raonic was the uh, reality that ruined Kay's chances the today. The reality check. Yeah. Not done yet, although our viewers responding on Twitter seem to have their sentimental favorite as K. Oh, really? Oh, but that's nice. So with their heart, yeah, they choose for Japan's number one, but with their head, they're picking a Swiss <laughs> number two. Yeah. Unofficial numbers, of course. Our data stream still <laughs> being monitored by our social media department. <laughs> Good question from a viewer as well from Pakistan. I already heard from him once, so we'll give him another chance here. Jahanzeb Mirza says people talk about taking more chances when somebody's in Nishikori's situation. Either slowed down and hampered somewhat physically or up against it with the style of play that Vavrenka has. What kind of chances exactly? What are the chances Nishikori would have to take today to find his way to the semifinals? I'd say calculated chances would, would be the best way I could describe it. And that means going big Thank off you. of second serves. Maybe not trying to hit winners off of the second serves, but certainly trying to take control of the points. Uh, obviously, on balls that are landing around the, the service line tee, you're just going to hit those offensively no matter what if you're Kane Ishikori. But maybe take some that are bouncing or a little bit deeper and closer to the baseline and trying to take offense over, over those as well. Again, the idea is is to not run left and right. So that just means that generally speaking in a tennis match, one person is running and one person is not. And if you're Kane Ishikori, you want to be that person in the middle of the court. So that just simply means you got to take offense first before Vavrinka gets it. Sees control of the point. He can stand on the run. And that might be off of low percentage balls, but unfortunately, in Kay's physical state, that's the higher percentage of the two situations. 
Thus the chances and he will have Wawrinka. to take if he wants to find a way to defeat Babarenka, who holds for one all. Did say the summer was cut short considerably. Did manage to get to the quarterfinals in Washington before losing to Gasquet, but he certainly seemed hampered by both the cyst on the right big toe and an ankle injury on the same foot that he suffered just a bit in practice with Gasquet at the start of the tournament. See the strapping and the brace on the right ankle of Nishikori. You know, when he and Gasquet were having a hit in the early stages, Sunday, Monday of the Washington, D.C. event, sort of rolled it over and it became a bit tender. He was able to post a couple of victories, but not able to answer the bell and post one against Gasquet when they finally met in the quarters. So, <laughs> Big moment for Nishikori, May 12th. First Japanese man to break in the top 10 in the Emirates ATP rankings in the history since they began in 1973. And he is a superstar back home. Recognized as such, reached number nine in the world, currently two spots below that career high just outside the top 10. But enjoys tremendous support in Japan. And they are hopeful he can make a good showing in the last major of the year. Okay. For the second time, he has the lead in set number two, though it's just a hole to serve that's the difference as he tries to come back from a set down. Trying to get those legs moving, get the blood pumping, flowing through, keep them strong. Kainishikori trying to play catch up with Stan Wawrinka in the quarterfinals. Spot against Novak Djokovic or Andy Murray at stake in the top half of the draw. Wawrinka in the driver's seat thus far. And that's the kind of calculated Love. risk that we were talking about a couple games ago. You know, good deep return, push Vavrinka back. Vavrinka dropped a ball short. Cage is not messing around. Step up, thump. Get those points over with quick. Love City. Kenny Shikori, as everyone's ready to write him off and say, you know, it'd be interesting to see if he gets through this match. Well, here he is, standing in, trying to make inroads on Vavrenka's serve and get off to a great start in the second set. Vavrenka can be a little unsettled at time. Oh. Shikori trying to make certain of that here.
15, 30. <laughs> Thank you. It was last year that Vavrenka got into the quarterfinals in New York for the first time, and he was able to take out the defending champion, Andy Murray, to book himself a spot in the semis. Oh. The results he's posted this year in just the majors alone almost seems to assure him a spot at the ATP World Tour Finals in London come late October, early November. As I mentioned, Taylor, sometimes things can get a little wayward for Vavrenka. Ah, absolutely. I mean, Vavrenka is the heavy favorite in this match if he comes out and plays solid tennis. Nishikori had a break point in the opening game of the match. Could not convert. Here's another try. Vavrenka dismisses that very quickly. He's got to be shaking his head <laughs> on that one. In fact, his quickest dismissal of the day. 136 miles per hour. If you didn't believe me, there was the evidence, Taylor. I think that depth is going to be a really huge deal in this match because every time Vavrinka drops the ball short, K is going to go for not quite broke, but close to it. And every time K drops the ball short, Vavrinka is just going to start moving him around and, and putting a hurt on those legs. Oh. So first one to blink and not keep good depth on their ground strokes is, is really going to be up against it. Kicks and away from Lovely. Nishikori as he finds the frame, but not the sweet spot. And delivers a souvenir into the crowd, and Bobrenka gets to two all. Just jumps up on him. 50 minutes into this match, Bobrenka up 6 3 and tied two all in the second. USOpenshop.org. Guess what you can do there? That's right. Shop, souvenirs, mementos, keepsakes, merchandise. It's all available. USOpenshop.org. Vavrinka's got one of the best one-handers out on tour, and I think at Australian Open this year, it was the best by far. He was able to really create a lot of angle cross-court and hit big change direction down the line. But this whole U.S. Open, that backhand down the line has been very erratic for Stan. Let's delve into that a little bit deeper. Why do you think the climate or the environment in Melbourne seem to work so well to produce such a strong backhand for Vavrenka? I don't think it had much to do with the change in surface, although there is a noticeable change in surface and tennis balls that they use. The tennis balls down in Australia tend to be a little heavier, a little bit more nap and felt on them. And the surface can range year to year. Some years it's slow, some years it's lightning fast. But Last year at the U.S. Open, Vavrinka was hitting his backhand unbelievable here as well. So to me, it has less to do with the surface and the conditions that, that they're playing on. As we see Coach Michael Chang in the black hat. 
1989 Roland Garros champion. Now Ishikori's coach. And I just feel that, uh, you know, the backhand is just, he's not feeling it as well. It's just not as confident. It's not working for whatever the reason. Back to back, double faults. Puts Nishikori right back to even footing when it looked like he was going to claim the lead for a third consecutive time on serve. It's not done yet, but you can see him grimace, frustrated with himself and the inability to find the court in four tries consecutively. All in all, 28 unforced errors, if you did the quick math there. Helping Nishikori's oh. cause, for certain. And Nishikori hasn't and lost a point Nishikori. on first serve in the set, and he's held all three times he stepped to the line. Nishikori leads three games to two. Second set. First set, Vavrenko. There was a time, if you looked up Vavrenka on the ATP World Tour site or in the media guide, find to say Stanislas Favrenka, nicknamed Stan for a long time. He decided that is the moniker he wanted, and this year it's changed officially. Don't find any more remnants of Stanislas. Just Stan. And for his biggest fans, Stan the man. Fifty low. Just so versatile off that backhand wing. And that was an excellent defensive shot by Nishikori. Stan had to execute perfectly to pull that off. Sergio. Not only too good, but just an exceptional one-two punch. Of making Ishikori go side to side. It even looks pretty. How about that? <laughs> I concur. That's what you call a pretty easy hold. Another hold at love for Vavrenka as he matches Ishikori's output through six games in set number two. Stan getting ready for the new balls. Going to change next game. Middle of the week. On the second week of the U.S. Open, 23,000 can fill Arthur Ashe Stadium when it's at capacity. As we get closer to the weekend, the semifinals and the championship matches on Sunday and Monday for the women and men respectively. Those upper reaches at the top deck, which you just saw, they too will have fans in place. I dare say even tonight under the lights on this 10th day with both number one players in the world competing. The biggest tennis only stadium in the world. This will be pretty close tonight. Serena Williams and Novak Djokovic, of course, who I'm speaking of. This could be a very telling game, not just because so many people like to say it's the all-important oh, seventh game, but because of what it holds mentally for Kei Nishikori and the unraveling that could occur if Avrenka is able to break here. One, two, 
Once again, Michael Chang in the dark hat. I think that begs the question, Taylor, what your thoughts are on the American's influence on Nishikori and what he's added to the equation by coming into his camp. Um, well, I, you know, I'm pretty close with Kay and, and his agent, Oliver, and Michael. Michael comes in and trains when he needs a hit at our academy sometimes in Southern California. And, uh, you know, I feel like Kay's <laughs> skill, his level, hasn't really changed that much. He's, you know, for the last couple of years, he's really been doing a good job of beating some of the guys in the top ten, and he's looked great. Uh, I think he's just added maybe a little emotional, mental toughness. And that's, that's what I think they were looking for out of Kane Shakori. That's certainly a hallmark of Chang's career. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's why they sought specifically Chang out. Not just durability on the physical side, but the fortitude mentally to be able to match it and do so at a consistent rate. Oh, that a little call off the net cord monitor. And Kay is like one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, and he's so soft-spoken, so meek. So I think they wanted just a little, a little a light toughness. Of fire. Yeah, a little <laughs> toughness in there. And that's tough for Nishikori. Vavrenko returning a good 10 to 12 feet behind the baseline. Really a pretty benign point in play. Magnus Norman, coach for Vavrenka, pleased with what the opportunity could avail itself of. And Davis Cup, captain, next to Magnus is Severin Luthi. Got to spend a lot of time with Severin in Dubai at the end of last year. Oh. A little chance to get Jared Donaldson over there and have, who lives over there and resides here, trains there? The great one. Two seed. But the number one in the list of men's Grand Slams. We're talking, of course, about Roger Federer, who worked Severin quite frequently, still in contact with and maintains a close relationship with. Magnus Norman has helped solidify Vavrenka's hopes for not just one, but multiple major titles. This is one of those calculated risks we're talking about. That ball bounced deep. McKay deciding to give it a ride to the open court. And a crucial hold. Yeah. As soon as momentum was going to slip you away, Kenny Shikori steps up and does so mightily. Two break points saved. Back in front. Stan Vavrenka knows something about coming off the heels of a long, five-set match and having to compete in the next round with difficulty. Just think back to that magical run in Melbourne. Love you. Love you. Able to get past Novak Djokovic in five sets in the quarterfinals. 9-7 in the fifth. Probably empathize with kind of Shikori, but he certainly won't sympathize. <laughs> There's no way Stan Bobrek is going to miss out on a chance if he can for another semifinal here in New York City. And it looks like Stan's going to make it to the semifinal, but I tell you what, the middle of this second set has been very testy. Two love 30 games now. Yeah. Hasn't been sharp. 12 unforced errors in this set already for Bobrenka. And 
Nishikori wakes up his followers. A blast from Kay. Love this kid's got some fight. There's no doubt about it. Vavrinka getting too passive, dropping too many short. Hasn't had a lot of opportunities to wheel and deal. Just his sixth winner. What a wonderful position to be in now. The triple break point. And went after it again. 15. Wow. And why not? Yeah, again, those are those calculated risks we're talking about. It's, it was a high percentage play for the situation K is in. Not feeling 100% fresh, not really able to track down a bunch of shots. That's a fastball inside, fouled off into the stands. And Vavrenka avoids the threat. Yes. That is the heater of our expression from the Major League Baseball team just across the way at City Field. The Major League franchise, the New York Mets, Vavrenka bringing major heat and getting himself out of a big jam. This will not sit well with Kay. Right now on the stat sheet, the ledger shows 0 for 5 in break points today. And instead of serving for the set, Nishikori is staring down Vavrenka joining him at 4 all. Ridiculous. 138. He had a 134, a 136, and seals the deal on the eighth game. The 138 mile per hour race. I don't think that that game is going to have any negative impact on Kay mentally. He's a tough kid. You know, he's going to keep coming back, keep fighting. But man, what a tough two games to not walk away with. Love 30 last game, love 40. That, that game, that's, that's rough. I'd definitely be breaking a few rackets. <laughs> It's a good thing you bring a couple extra with you to the court. Wow, that looked lazy from Stan. Yeah, he's disappointed with himself. He might have misplayed it a bit, but it certainly wasn't the best footwork we've seen from Vavrenka today. I don't, I just, it looked lazy. The footwork looked really bad. So it's you know. Well, in case of the call on the right fast side. Have a chance to see the electronic review. As requested, we call it the chase review. As Vavrenka gets the challenge and the call is overturned, it puts Nishikori in a bind as he commits the double fault. Still hoping to hold off Vavrenka's advances, get himself to 5-4. Just continue with the trend, put himself to the lead. Challenge from Nishikori as he gives a long look down, missing the mark with his forehand. Only 12 unforced errors on the day. He hasn't been the more aggressive of the two. 
That's almost 20 less than his opponent, Bavrenka, who has 31 errors today. The timing is everything. Bavrenka is on the goal on the right fast line. Goal scored in. Could be a good time for Nishikori's first ace, which would stand unless Bavrenka's challenge can overturn the call. And it will oh. not. No sense. 40 30. Bavrinka has two challenges remaining. It's got to feel good. <laughs> Sixth winner from the backhand side, just worth a long, slow look. And the solid response from Nishikori, just his second ace, both coming in this game. Trying to hold off Avranka. Nishikori says he wants to challenge. I wonder if Emmanuel Joseph is going to allow him to. It sounds like it. And they will. Ball was called good. Nishikori did put a racket on it, but immediately signaled that he wanted to challenge. And here is the chase review. Called good, stays okay. good. Yes. Yes. She going yes. 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 Advantage, Nishiko. Vavrenka, in order to get himself to a two set to none lead, it's going to be another hold. Second set. Square in New York. Stan Vavrenka has only lost a single point on his first serve. Nine of ten in this set. That's a pretty good mark, except he's only got that first offering in 38% of the time. As he serves to stay in set number two, he'll have to get far better success out of that first offering. Kenny Shikori somehow is going to wrestle this set away. Despite numerous opportunities for Nishikori to give himself the outright lead, missing out on four break points. Overall 0 for 5 on the day. He's still poised one game away from making it even. Oh. 
Ace away from hitting double digits is Vavrenke. He's shown some power and some prowess. Fourteen. His bid for a hold of love is spoiled for the moment. Seemingly closing in on five all. Maybe, just maybe heading towards a second set tiebreak to decide who will come away with the set. for five all. Well, let's examine another area, Taylor, that we talk about with Kei Nishikori. You've seen him quite a bit over the years, hit with him, been in his presence. Let's talk about what the viewer in South Africa, Roberto, is asking. Has there been a market improvement that you see in his serve? Is that an area that has helped get him to the top ten and have such results of late? You know, Everything over the course of, of time, you know, the last four or five years, everything's just naturally going to improve. Oh. Would I say that his serve has improved drastically more than, than the rest of his game has improved? No, it's, it's still the biggest problem that he has. He doesn't generate enough free points. He's not accurate enough with it. And that's ultimately, if, if there's a reason why he can't win Grand Slams, that's going to be the reason that he has to play tennis well, that's tennis. too hard. So has his, has his serve improved? Sure, it's improved. I, I think everything improves over the course of the natural, but it has it improved an outstanding amount compared, you know, I, I, don't, I don't see it from the, even from the times that I was practicing with him down in Ball of Terry's. I mean, maybe it goes to a point that you were mentioning in bringing up majors. Maybe at majors, it's a major liability. It's two titles <laughs> in Memphis and in Barcelona against not having to play seven matches over 14 right. days. You know, maybe his serve has improved incrementally to help him in those sort of events. Right. And if it's, if it's coming across that I'm saying that Kay's serve is bad, then I'm, I'm doing a bad job kind of conveying what I'm trying to say. His serve is very good, but you compare it to the rest of his game, you compare his serve to Federer's, Djokovic. Uh, even Nadal has, has a way more effective serve than Nishikori. And that's the man who got him in the final in Madrid. Nadal beating Nishikori. Pitiful juncture here in this 11th game for Vavrenka, who has missed out on two break opportunities himself in this set. To try to wrestle the lead away from Nishikori. Hasn't held it once in the set as Nishikori served first. And we've had no breaks. But I guess it always goes in comparison, and we hope Roberto finds his query answered enough to his satisfaction. But you know, trying to bust through that ceiling, maybe there's a cap on where Nishikori's skills are currently. And 
And even with those skills, he yeah. has to remain healthy for a season to really put in the full effort. Boy, would it be great to see him go through a whole year at peak health and fitness. Second set. First set back. Straight sets in the opening round against Yuri Vesely. Tomas Bellucci took a set off him in the second round. Blas Kavic, Kavic couldn't take the court with a right foot injury before Tommy Robredo extended Stan to four sets. Swiss number two playing in his second quarterfinal at the U.S. Open, serving to force a tiebreak in set number two. Emphasis on taking time away from Nishikori by Vavrenka. Electing to come forward, finish the point. See if he can move things along. And continue the trend. No breaks since the second game of the opening set. Another error for Vavrenka, his 35th of the match, 18 coming in this set. That was a pretty benign threat from Nishikori. No real reason, truly an unforced error. Offering a glimmer of hope of Nishikori to perhaps get a late break. Steal the set. Oh. to steal it. I don't know if Stan is tight. There's the Nishikori cheer squad. I don't know if he's tight. I don't know if he's just, again, not feeling 13, the ball. 14. But man, he has gone through patches, especially in the second set. It almost looks like he's trying to bring Nishikori back into this match. Sprinkling errors across Arthur Ashe Stadium, and it gets Nishikori to set point. and a double fault and just yeah, like that snap your fingers Katie Shikori. Shikori right back in it as they split Seven the opening two one. sets one set yeah there's a little more pep in the step of Katie Shikori why not takes the second set with a late break there had only been one break in the opening set it came in game number set two set. The only break in set number two comes in game number 12. And right like that, we're all square. And it's a best of three sets format left to decide who moves through to the semifinals. And Japan's top player will serve to begin the third. Just like that, as if taking one of those energy shots and just putting it right into Kei Nishikori, he's got a whole lot more verve, vigor. He's right back and come to play. And that's what adrenaline does. 
I mean, how pumped is he to win that second set? If he lost that second set, this match, you have to think, is over. And he knows Vavrinka's feeling something. 13. Yeah, Vavrinka's hitting a lot of winners at 32, but at 37 unforced errors. That's a monster number for two sets. And having big numbers like what Vavrinka has right now, it's always a little scary. Because if you see a stat page and you say, oh, 10 double faults in, in the course of a match, that's a lot. But if that happens every time when you're up 40 love and you space it out over the course of 10 games, it's not that big of a deal. But unfortunately, a lot of times what happens with errors is they come in clumps. So when you have a lot of winners, yeah, they come in clumps. And errors, they come in clumps too. And then you can give and donate games away. And with all the concern and thought process going into whether or not Kane Ishikori would be able to muster up enough energy for this match and be able to put up a significant fight, let alone take a set off of Vavrenka, well, that seems to have been answered to this juncture. The numbers speak pretty well to the fact that, again, Vavrenka taking the upper hand and trying to control points, but they both played pretty evenly. Other than the fact that uh, Nishikori converted and, and Vavrenka didn't, you know, Stan's numbers were pretty good. You know, he had his winners to uh, unforced ratio is better at more aces. And even even though he, you know, he finally did get broken, he had chances to get broken three different games that set. Yeah. And there was a love 30 game, a love 40 game, and finally that last game at 5-6. 15 okay. Thirty fifty. And Vavrenka now in double digits, ace number 10, as he finds his way to one all. And things get right back to where they were through the majority, well, really, truth be told, of this entire match. Just two breaks to serve, one each. A run of 18 consecutive holds between the two. Almost seemed destined for a second set tie break before some miscues off the racket of Vavrenka really cost him in the last game. Bounces back to Vavrenka and then right over the net. Nishikori had his back to the play for a second. Wondered if it got on his side, but no. Okay, we'll get the point. And yeah, that rash, just a couple of bad shots, a forehand error, a backhand error, and the double fault on set point. Vavrenka needing to distance himself from that disappointment. Oh. 
Well, that'll do. Yeah. Good service start for both. 13 points played. The server between them has dropped just a single point here in the third set. Hope you're enjoying coverage of the 2014 U.S. Open. Watching wherever you are in the world or here domestically in the United States as we are at day 10 inside Arthur Ashe Stadium. The big house now pretty much taking us through the conclusion of the final major of the year. This glorious facility in Flushing, Queens. One of the five boroughs that makes up New York City. And if you've never had a chance to travel to New York and witness the U.S. Open up close and get the energy and the vibe of this major metropolis and how it informs this tournament specifically. Well, you are encouraged, invited, and welcome. Chanel Beavis of South Africa says, one day I will be in the city for the U.S. Open. My favorite tournament of the season in my favorite city. Oh. You can hardly be blamed for that opinion, Chanel. 15. Meanwhile, Stan Vavrenka has been hot and cold. It's been it's interesting. It's been cold lately, <laughs> I'll tell you that. It's been, he's been cold for the last half hour or so. Yeah, but he held served just fine in his start off this third set in his first game. But there's hot and cold. A double fault. It's seemingly out of nowhere, but there's been too many, five of them. Forehand betrayed him at the conclusion of the second set, but there he comes up with a nice, just easy rhythm for a 13th winner from that wing. It's been an odd ebb and flow in Vavrenka's game today. That was close. Wow. <laughs> 40, 50. And Vavrenka, just like that, a double fault, and then two nice goals. succession of points Seven. with good form for two all. Well, once more, we invite you to go to usopen.org to follow the US Open. You can listen to US Open Radio, presented by American Express, and you can follow with real-time scoring and statistics. The beauty of having your computer nearby or your handheld device, tablet, usopen.org. Second quarterfinal of Japan's top player in his career. Reached the fourth round of this event back in 2008. It seemed as though that was going to be a good indicator that he was really going to be a force to reckon with. Round of 16 appearance in just his second ever major. Had to take a couple of majors off between 2009 Roland Garros and 2010 Australian Open because of injury. And then he needed the better part of eight more majors before he was finally able to get back to a round of 16, ultimately finishing in the quarterfinals in 2012 down under. Two fourth round appearances this season in the previous three majors. Fourth round at the Australian Open and Wimbledon. Sandwich in the middle, a disappointing opening round loss at Roland Garros. And here he finds himself in the last eight in New York for the first time. Vavrenka starting to heat up. And when he has a target, particularly with a backhand, it's often a bullseye. And that's a pretty good point because sometimes when you play somebody that's hurt or that's tired and, or laboring, it's uncomfortable to play your normal game. You feel like you should take something off, play a little safer, just because, hey, this guy's not going to show up today. I, I got to give myself a little bit more margin, a little more room. Unfortunately, you end up playing worse more often than not. How many times have we seen Andy Murray grab a side, you know, grab his ankle, grimace on his face, and grab then his, the opponent. His armpit. Yeah, and his <laughs> opponent just crumbles before yeah. our eyes. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Be 
hard pressed for me to put myself in the position, but you certainly would have been there. And for Stan to have to listen to constantly your opponent. Oh, He's going to be tired. Yeah. He's worn out. He didn't finish till 2.30 the night before. And it's, it's tough to know whether Stan is just continuing kind of his up and down play that we've seen so far this tournament or that he's really thinking about it and focusing on the fact that this is a huge opportunity. I mean, tennis is such a selfish sport that you really have to be concerned about yourself and what you're doing out there, especially at this level. If you start taking into consideration too much of what's going on on the opposite side of the court, especially stuff you can't control, then you're definitely putting yourself behind the eight ball. The feeling coming back to Nishikori. Out in front in set three. Okay, Nishikori lighting up Arthur Ashe Stadium at 4.59 in the p.m. on this beautiful Wednesday. The humidity has dissipated and gone. Now just warm temperatures, perfect conditions for tennis. Second day of week two at the U.S. Open. I mentioned that Kenny Shikori is so understated. Taylor, you've had a lot of time to be able to deal with him, talk with him, very soft-spoken, really doesn't put on any airs, very humble fellow. But, man, when he lets his tennis talk, he, is a sh he can scream. Absolutely, and he fights hard. He's tough. You know, I, I, I love the kid. That's why I want to see him do so well. He's just everything you want to see in an athlete. Like you said, humble, works hard, never gives up. That's it. Like respectful of his opponents and people he meets. And just, yeah, people in general. Yeah. Walking through the halls, nod to everybody, held hello. And the other aspect that you get from Kay that most people wouldn't have the opportunity to do, but someone like yourself would, is the fact that he seems to be very in the moment. He seems to enjoy sort of the whole process of the traveling, being at the tournaments, mixing in, getting the work in off the court, but not being too overwhelmed by it with a serious, stern look on his face. Yeah, no, he's definitely not overwhelmed. I mean, he's got a great team around him. And he's been very mature mentally from a young age. It's been all about the process. But if you had to start from scratch to say, to sort of formulate the ideal tennis player, if you were bringing him up through your ranks and working with someone, would you want athleticism, let's say they're even, would you want someone who's emotional, that's fiery, or do you want someone who's willing to just be even keel, but has you know the long distance goal before them? Someone who wants to just get it, grab a hold of it? Impossible question to answer. Okay. It's a great question, but it's impossible to answer just because who's the greatest pl player that's ever played the game? <laughs> I see where you're going. You know, emotional and fiery. Who's no, uh, uh, Roger Federer, who's another great player that's also, you know, arguably one of the greatest players ever played. It was Pete Sampras, even Keel, Bjorn Borg, even Keel. I mean, there's no right way to do it. John McEnroe, fiery. Jimmy Connors, fiery. Not that there's no right answer on that one. Okay, fair point made. And now Nishikori trying to make his point. 
with break point. Well, all those cheers aren't just coming from the box of six or seven that are supporting Kei Nishikori. This crowd really seems to be enjoying what Nishikori is putting forth. Perhaps they're reminiscing about the late finish of the match against Raonic and feeling he's the sentimental favorite, or they're just enjoying his tennis and his determination. Vavrenka is not enjoying this a bit. But it's really Vavrenka is the one to blame. He's the one that has brought Nishikori into this match from the middle of that second set to now. Yeah, without question, you make a good point, and then the, the statistics even bear that out because as Nishikori has been steady and just solid, hasn't really done too much, hasn't tried to go too far, 17 winners, just 16 unforced errors. For Vavrenka, 39 winners, 44 errors. Sometimes it's part and parcel with being the aggressor. But I also say what has turned has been the fact that not only is Stan trying to stay a little bit more consistent now, he's starting to drop these balls really short, like that return. We talked about it, you know, in the, kind of the later stages of the first set, beginning of the second. You can see Stan's frustration. Depth was going to be huge. And with emphasis, Kaini Shikori strings together and three consecutive Nishiko. games, poised to take a two set to one lead Nishiko in the quarterfinals. As he serves to stay in set number three. Oh. I'll break his own worst enemy at the conclusion of Nishiko. set number two, double faulting on set point, and through this three game slide that he has suffered at the hands of the 10 seed. Novavrenka continued to supply error after error, but the last couple games Nishikori has stepped up. He senses Vavrenka's vulnerability. Just applying a bit more pressure to give Stan much to think about. That's the type of shot that Kai has been able to come up with over the course of the last set and a half that's really starting to give Vavrenka some worries. And you know <laughs> that Djokovic and Murray are excited about Vavrenka having to work a little bit out there because after the first set, it looked like it was going to be a stop. It, at the stage there, it looked like Kane might not be able to finish. Yeah, there were definitely oh. sort of the hanging in the air aspect of perhaps Nishikori just not 
fit to conclude a match. Handcuffed on the serve from Vavrenka to get him to 40-15. Smith tries to prolong the set, but it's been a complete reversal from both Vavrenka's level of play and Ishikori's ability to exert effort. Backhand. Another example of just off the mark. Not sharp. And the ball striking was working for Vavrenka early. The pendulum has swung to Nishikori's side. Manuel Joseph of France, chair umpire. Haven't heard from him in a while. Nor have we seen a chase review in a bit. Now we do. And Nishi Corey challenged the call. And, he's overturned. and the call is overturned. Yes. I was curious whether they were going to give K that point or not, <laughs> yeah. because a lot of times there's a question, there's an argument ensuing. Did the guy have a play on or did not did they not? Was the call made after contact or before? I tell you what, you know, looking at the second serve stats here on both guys' side, Kay is just outplaying Vavrinka once the point gets started. Vavrinka's only won two of twelve on his second serve. Kay's won five of seven on his. And unless you're talking about John Isner, the second serve points won is a great barometer on who's playing better from the baseline. You can see Nishikori just indicating to himself just a bit more reserved. Went for a big shot, tried to find his way across the high part of the net, and he wants that back. A shot he's hit a thousand plus times a day in practice. Doesn't clear the net for a set point. He'll have to wait for the two set to one lead he seeks. Oops. And an ever so subtle indication to Emmanuel Joseph that Nishikori would like to see the chase review for a second time, hoping for another overturn of the call. Both sense. Advantage of Vavrenka saves the set point and prolongs the set, and it'll be up to Kei Nishikori to finish Nishikori it off. It's five games to three, set set. Nishikori has two challenges remaining. We talked a bit earlier about the serve of Kei Nishikori, if there's been a market improvement, if there's been some free points coming his way a little bit more often of late. Either way, he's been efficient in this set, losing just five points on serve, 12 of 15 on his first, five of seven. Thank you. On his second. 
A hold and a two set to one lead. Kay's been serving out wide on that deuce side an awful lot. Just really exposing the defensive returns of Wawrinka. You know, I love a tweener just as much as the next guy, but serving for the set 15-30 down. 15-40. Is this no. a bit out of characteristic or no. uncharacteristic of and Kay? You can't argue that he didn't have time to run around and hit a forehand. I mean, he was waiting there for that tweener. A little sense Thank of the you. dramatic for Nishikori, and it could bite him. Chang would not be impressed with that shot selection. And he's broken. A poor service game from Ishikori and Vavrenka right back in set number three. Five games to four. Third set. One set. There's no doubt about it. We've seen an intriguing matchup between Stan Vavrenka and Kei Nishikori. We knew there'd be some big quality ball striking, and there has been. We've also seen some errant shots and some questionable decisions made and shot selection and so forth, but certainly not boring and certainly has gotten more intriguing in the latter stages of set number three. Stan Wawrinka seemingly all but put away and destined to fall behind two sets to one, has come back from 5-2 down. Hold and a break. And another hold would get him to 5-all. And continue the intrigue. This is more what we were Lovely. expecting throughout this match. A bit of fireworks, some athleticism, and sure, we wanted some entertainment. That was a lot more like what was happening in the first set, where Stan was dictating most of the play, and Nishikori was scrambling around when he could muster the energy. Vavrenka brushes aside any doubters and says, I'm still in it. 
I'm not going anywhere. Five games old. And the skirmish for this third set will continue. And that has got to be disappointing, to say the least, for Nishikori. Been serving so well. Been performing at such a high level through the first seven games to squander these last three and the lead. We'll see what his response is and if it matches that of Bobrenka. I love that lower court view so much. You get to see a little bit more height over the net from the shots. A little bit more proper perspective. It's just amazing how quick the momentum changes, the energy swings. I can remember three games ago, the Nishikori box was just getting pumped, ready to go, and now, how subdued are they? Yeah, they're, they're as deflated as Nishikori seems to be now. I actually think, I think it's tougher emotionally to be in the, the player's box than it is out on the court. Because out on the court, you're focused on what you're supposed to be doing. You're just trying to plug away. Sure, and once the point gets going, yeah, you sort of block everything else out. Don't exactly. You? And you're in a good position these days to Yeah, be able it's to so in that tough. Regard. So tough to be in that player's box. the biggest aspect of it? Is it having been out there and knowing what you would do and you would want your charge to do, or is it feeling the nerves of all you've worked for and whether you can see it coalescing? Yeah, it's it's not really saying what I, I mean, I guess sometimes it comes to, ah, oh, man, I wish he would change this up. This is just not working for him and in ball. But really, it's just you want them to do so well and you're, they're not, you know? Even in an easy routine win, a lot of times you win 10 more points than your opponent. Oh my goodness. Just the push, and Nishikori knows it was there, and he missed it. And now he could pay a mighty price. A break point, and Bavrenka reclaims the lead. Michael Chang getting fired up. So I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> You're not kidding. <laughs> it's just rough in there. Interesting, a little vamos from Kainishikori. Advantage. Just misplayed that swinging volley, and that <laughs> was spectacular. <laughs> Something special. Even he has to say, whoa. Oh, he How do you like that? To the <laughs> well, Ranga says, well done. Well done. I don't like you anymore. Yeah. And a 
I'm only going to give you so many style points. Somehow, some way, Nishikori ends the slide and puts himself back to the lead once more. Vavrenka continues to try to play catch up in set number three. Seven nations represented amongst the last eight. The 2014 U.S. Open men's draw. Only one country with two players through to the quarterfinals. Switzerland, Roger Federer, the two seed, and Stan Vavrenka serving to stay in set number three. We could put aside thoughts of him being diminished physically, whether or not this was an uphill battle. He's really come to play in this third set, and maybe vetting some of the frustration of allowing his 5-2 lead to slip away. Boom! Tenth winner from the forehand side. That man is no shrinking violet either. He's had his problems. His difficulties have come in droves, but he seems to find a way to get himself out of trouble in this third set, at least for the moment. He was in a similar position towards the close of set number two, remember. Hey, he's lost the last few points here, but he looks like a totally different mover on the court than what we saw in the first set. And is there a way after such a long match, after that marathon against Roundage, that it takes a little bit to play into and get loose? Well, that's what we were talking about. It could be one of two situations. Is, is it's going to take a while for his legs to get going and the blood to get pumping in those legs, or he could just be flat out of gas. And seem to get a fill up here towards the end of set number three, and a tie break will decide it. Yeah, it, it looks like he's improving. His foot speed's improving. Now, I don't know if that's just solely because he won that second set and found a little adrenaline and is making a push to see if he can manage to get up two sets to one, or if he's just really feeling okay out there. So a 13th game will indeed decide who takes the upper hand. It'll be Nishikori to serve first in the tiebreak. Chase review once more, and the Lions judge is rewarded. 
One and one. Proven correct. Call not overturned. Oh. A 50th unforced error from Vavrenka. Ishii Corey with a mini break early. Side ball called out, and Emmanuel Joseph will say the call stands. Hay had total control at this point and just a slight misstep. And that's what Stan has. That's what he offers. He can change the, the outlook of the point in one shot. Difficulties for Nishikori. A couple of errors and Vavrenka finds his way back from an early deficit. So they'll switch ends as Sun has moved off to the west and now Arthur Ashe Stadium completely bathed in shadow. Approaching now the bottom of the five o'clock hour on this Wednesday. Third day of September 2014. And the struggle and the tussle continues. Someone will gain the upper hand. Not much separating the two at the two hour, 21 minute mark. He knows it. He knows it. But Vrenka again started to fall back into the pattern that got him into trouble, dropping a few balls short in the middle of the court. Hey, not able to make him pay the price. It just seems a bit agitated, and you can understand why he'd be frustrated missing the mark on that shot, giving Vrenka the chance to put himself to the lead.
6-3, Vavrinka. Chang trying to give a bit of a boost as the support comes from Nishikori's box. A little creativity here to keep Vavrenka guessing. But Stan now with a chance to finish it off. Desperate for some good first serves to find their mark. Got the first serve, but it's the backhand that can't find its way between the lines. And it was that backhand down the line again. Five he old. is certainly not feeling that shot consistently. We have seen some great ones, but missing far more than making. Another backhand misses, and Vavrenka in trouble. 6 5. Missing up. Well, just as it seemed, the backhand down the line has betrayed Stan Vavrenka. He dials one up, and that sends people right out of their seats onto their feet. But that's exactly why I think this was a great play on Nishikori's part. Make Stan beat me with a shot that he's just not feeling today. Obviously, he's talented, he's gifted, he's going to make some. Unfortunately, it just came on my set point. And Nishikori knew it, too. He almost a bemused smile on his face, like, okay, now you're going to decide yeah, that that's exactly. going to work for you? I'm just giving you just some shots to line it up, and you miss by a good two feet. But now is when you pick your target and strike true. Okay. Fair play. Switch ends 12 points. Set point dismissed for Nishikori. Well, New Yorkers like a good old-fashioned street fight now and then. That's some bludgeoning of the ball. 18 shots back and forth before Nishikori just can't keep hold of his racket. And Vavrenka saving break point. 
finds his way to his first chance for 2-1. Dan's got all four challenges in this third set at his disposal. He'll use one here. And he will not overturn the call. Have to offer a second serve. Almost identical positioning. Bobrenka not coming forward, but exactly as Stan had hit down the line from that end. Here comes Kane Shikori with his version. Seven all. Just incredible. Incredible. The shots that are keeping these guys in the set are cold winners. <laughs> Look at Chang. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Michael Chang is animated as we ever saw him when he was on the court. That was good. No challenge oh. from Bob Renka. He has a better view than I do, so I trust him. Vavrenka offers a lifeline to Nishikori to preserve Eight, his chance seven. for a two set to Nishiko. one lead. 18 of Vavrenka's 54 errors have come in this set. And it'll be a third look for Nishikori. are looking bright for Japan's and rising son who is set. one Nishiko, set away seven, from his first final four berth at a major. It all in my opinion all depends Full on set. Stan. I think we've seen a steady level from Nishikori even in the oh well he's moving better now. His, his level has increased. But Stan is the big fluctuator in this tennis match. He's played some very, very solid, overpowering tennis at times. And at other times, he's played passive, hitting the ball short, letting Nishikori dictate. And at times, just committing a whole bunch of unforced errors. So he's kind of the, the wild card, the X factor. It really rests on how he plays. 40 love. And Vavrenka quickly moves to one love as he gets the hold at love. Well, the third set lasted all of 64 minutes. And it provided a lot of highlights and additionally some not so keen moments for either player. But ultimately it was Nishikori who outlasted the Swiss. And you can't really say anything watching the set. Obviously you could nitpick the first serve percentage from Vavrenka and the three on force. But realistically he had set points. Nishikori had set points. They both had ample opportunity to, to seal the deal on that third set. Oh. I think you're right. The statistics don't really bear out how dramatic the shifts were in set number three, but maybe it's best summarized by at Yemi Yojo. Said serious backhand and forehand on display here. And you could say that about either player. Both were just bludgeoning the ball.
好接路。And perfect starts for both as each holds serve at love. One, one all. Well, we have asked you for your questions and your comments, so we do have to get to a couple more of them here. And this one, I guess, is intriguing in one sense. Matthew McGee wants to know, specifically from you, Taylor, does Kai need to win this set to win the match? Well, obviously, if he does win the set, he wins the match. But I think it pretend leads more towards his fitness and will he be able to pull this out in five if he can't get across the line in this set? You just have to, in my opinion, what you'd look at is the trend of what's going on. Is Cave better now than he was in the start of the match? And I'd say you couldn't argue. We'd have to agree. Have to is. agree. So I think that even if he loses this set, it seems like he's got enough gas to do damage in the fifth. I, that's what I, I mean, again, I don't know for certain, but it looks like he's in the mat. Oh, well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of grimaces almost betray the comments. I would still say he's got enough to push through. And the adrenaline he got from winning that second set would be the same adrenaline, even if he lost the fourth, to say, I just have one more set. That's all I have to do. And for both, if you're just joining us or haven't heard, today is a lot less humid than it has been over the course of the last four days. So that bodes well for both. It's not as taxing physically for either. Perfect start to the set for both. Server hasn't lost a point. Pretty aggressive approach to come in off of from Nisha Corey. Didn't really stretch, stand out at all, hit it down the middle, but got away with it. Stan not able to make him pay. And a single point lost by the server for the first time through four games, but Nishikori no worse for wear. As he makes it to all, two hours and 50 minutes on court. Four minutes past 6 p.m. local time, usopenshop.org. We invite you to visit or go to facebook.com backslash usopentennis. Get in amongst the chatter that's going on on the internet. Vavranka has his own quarter in the top half of the draw. Yuri Vesely is opening round match. Straight sets, though, two tie breaks. Mm. 
Brazilian Tomás Bellucci was the next victim for Vavrenka, though Bellucci was able to take a set off of Stan. Laz Kapcic could not answer the bell in the third round, so that meant a walkover for Vavrenka before he ran into Tommy Robredo, the 16th seed, really making a physical endurance match. And going four sets before Vavrenka got into the quarterfinals once more. 14 long. Five and zero would put him in the semifinals for the second consecutive year. Forty fifty. Franca matches Nishikori dropping a single point. So they are cruising on serve, managing to hold five times. Bob Ranka just slightly out front. First of the men's quarterfinals taking place at the 2014 U.S. Open. Nishikori, Vavrenka, fourth set on serve. Two points lost in total through five games. We've seen some magnificent tennis displayed. We've also seen some, well, rather poor at times. All in all, fans entertained with the quality of play and the drama as it's unfolded. on the call on the right baseline. Both come in. The call was good. Vavrenka wants a challenge. It'll be the first challenge of the fourth set. Again, ball called in. Vavrenka saw it out, and he was incorrect. Call sense. 15. <laughs> Nishikori's advancement through the draw. Saw him in the opening round find his way past the wild card, Wayne Odesnik. American falling in three sets. Pablo Andahar of Spain in the second round, 6-4, six, 6-1 six, before the Spaniard pulled the ripcord and retired from the match. Leonardo Meyer, the 23 seed from Argentina, was another straight, sex vic straight sets victim. Tanishi Kori before the five setter 30, against the fifth seed Raonic that took four hours and 19 minutes. Finishing in the wee hours, 
tying two other matches for the latest finish ever in U.S. Open history. 1993, Wieland and Pernforns, and 2012, Isner and Kohlschreiber. Sergio. Well, double fault this game and a very reckless looking backhand. Just tried to absolutely outslap Vavrenka. The two points K has lost this game. Not look pretty. That's nice, though. That's high percentage for K Nishikori. I think that Nishikori's, he's challenging for one of the better forehands on tour. Still not to the level of Nadal or Federer or Djokovic. But it's close. Continuing to try to find a better angle. I just love that I shot so it. much in, in modern tennis. But not necessarily the backhand angle, but angles off of both sides. It's just when you execute that well, it opens up the whole court. Even if Nishikori gets that back three hours in, it's not going to be easy to track down the next ball. Good bit of angle right there to illustrate that once further. Even if Vavrenka gets that ball in play, he's a good meter and a half outside of the doubles alley. And Nishikori giving chase. Tracked it down and would have been able to redirect it into open court. Such a nice use of the parameters of the court and angles. Ability to gain control of the point. Advantage, Nishiko.
advantage, Nishiko. Three all, Full set. fourth set. Three hours and two minutes since it began here in Arthur Ashe Stadium. Each seeking to access the semifinals here amongst the last eight. This would be the first member of the final four. Bavranka holding a 2-0 edge, lifetime against Nishikori in their two previous meetings back in 2012. Didn't drop a single set. Now playing from behind. The biggest tennis only stadium in the world against Japan's top player. Oh. It has been an intriguing match. We've used that word a couple of times in trying to describe it because it has. It's been one of those head scratchers at times. There's been brilliance. There's been some play that's been, well, a little disconcerting for both. Well, that's brilliance. Great measure of the court just for guiding it for the return winner. 15 -0. Hard pressed to place it any better than that. You guys always say there's always room for improvement though, right? <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> there was a little space just to the left, a couple inches in the corner. That's pretty brilliant. Pretty good play in modern tennis is to take some speed off of the first serve, hit a nice kicker out wide, really make the returner see a defensive situation early. Even if he makes the return, Deuce Court is completely open. And good effort from Vavrenka once again into the lead. Nishikori, lots to think about trying to wrap it up in four sets in New York. Stan Wawrinka has set the bar very high in set number four, losing just two points on serve through four games. That is a magnificent output. And the success speaks for itself as he has the lead. Nishikori did face a break point in the set, but he has held with relative ease. Other than those three points that got him in a position to be broken, he saved. He's only lost four additional points other than that. So both serving very well. Something's going to have to change from the return position to try to pick up this set before it extends to another tie break. Side in forehand from Vavrinka there turned that point around. Just didn't fool Nishikori, didn't hit it big enough. Whenever you run that far around to hit a forehand, you take yourself out of court, and all Nishikori had to do was hit an angle, and that point was going to be flipped on its head. Mm -hmm. 
Stop it. Yeah. Cannons fired yeah. back and forth. Woo. Full games old. Full set. That's the kind of ball striking we expected to see from the outset, and they haven't disappointed late here past the three-hour mark. Four all on the scoreboard. Nishikori has not had even a sniff at but just two points on Vavrenka's serve in the set. This would be his opportunity to move. Take some chances, grab a break, try to serve it out. Well, yeah, easier said than done. Bob Renka has held sway from the line since this set began 38 minutes ago. Appreciate you tuning in, tennis fan, wherever you are in the world, across this great globe. And your support for this wonderful sport, all the way from Australia to Pakistan, getting calls in from Cape Town, South Africa, from Knicks at that third set. What brilliant tennis, fantastic drama. Start up the coffee machine, Nick. It's 12.23 a.m. there, buddy. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying this fourth set and how things unfold. Thanks for your comments at Twitter, at US Optimum 2014. If you care to, follow our coverage of the US Open there. Vavrenka, 15 aces, performed well in the previous round against Robredo by putting up some stellar numbers, hit 18 in that match. Oh, some trickery. Fleet of foot, and he disguised it well. And that might not be a bad play from Vavrinka up 40 love. Maybe starting to feel that Nishikori is slowing down a little bit. So wants to uh, see if he can burn some of Kay's energy on a, you know, not a huge point. 40 love's not a, not a massive point. It's worth taking a risk when yeah. you've got a little padding. No damage done. And Continuing on. Nine holds of serve. Can Nishikori keep up? Raise your hand, tennis fan. Are you having fun? I am. All right, there's one vote. Wherever you are and watching, whether here in the United States or across the world, there's been something to be entertained by in each and every one of these sets. Granted, there's been their miscues. Vavrenka, 63 on forced errors. But I'll just put that out there because aside from that, and that is a high number, there has been some brilliance. They really can't play this game of tennis, these two. Vavrenka and Nishikori well matched on this day in a rivalry that hasn't been won. Vavrenka winning both previous meetings, not allowing Nishikori more than four games in any of the four sets that they played. Here's Kay serving to try to make it five all and prevent Vavrinka from forcing a fifth set. How many times have we seen that play tonight from Nishikori? The serve out wide followed up by the big forehand. I, um, I reckon he practices that. I would say so. Because <laughs> it looks pretty natural for him. Second Good 
Chilo. Again, you know, that's just a product of a lot of times K's been taking that backhand early and hitting that angle. So Vavrinka was moving over quickly to cover it. And great change up from Nisha Corey. And that's one of the attributes of what I define as a weapon on the tennis court. If you can hit one part of the court unbelievably, then I don't yet call that a weapon. You have to be able to hit multiple parts of the court. Stern look from Michael Chang, wondering if a fifth double fault by Kenny Shikori could be troubling for him. You wouldn't think so, 40-15, right back to work. And long off the net court is Vavrenka. And 10 games divided evenly. One for you, one for me, two for you, and so on and so forth. And five all. We're encouraged by all the support at US Optimum 2014, our Twitter handle here at the US Open 2014. If you're not already following, do so at US Optimum 2014 and tell us where you're watching and what you think of the match. How about this? Reykjavik, Iceland, great match. Hope they keep up the intensity. Iceland. Yeah. Have you ever been? Never been. It's magnificent. I heard it's green. It was just there recently following Wimbledon. And it was unbelievable. Yeah, no, Geysers, yeah. glaciers, waterfalls. Shout out to Iceland. Great fun in the RVK. Vavrenka serving to try to reclaim the lead once more for a sixth time. The other aspect about Iceland, it so never got dark. 1.21 a.m., still light overhead. Vavrenka, hoping to find his way to the lead. Just that tenseness, so, so enjoyable for sports fans to know we're getting down to the business end and someone's gonna have to blink. And someone will seize the upper hand, whether it's the match for Nishikori or a fifth set for Vavrenka. He's still only lost three points <laughs> on serve this set. He's just cruising. Serving remarkably well while trying to maintain a presence in New York. Can't do any better than that. Six holds, and dropping three points. Lavinka. And the scoreboard tells Kei Nishikori he needs a hold Lavinka if he wants to get out of this in four, four sets. sets. Nishikori is by two sets to one. Evening in New York City. Things starting to shift, lights starting to come on, sun starting to set. Stan Vavrenka trying to prevent that from happening to his dreams of moving into the semifinals for a second straight year in New York. Kei Shikori hoping that he can just turn out the lights on the Swiss. Get through another long endurance match. He'll have to hold here to try to get out in four. Oh. 
And so it goes to a 13th game for a second consecutive set. And the excitement really palpable inside Arthur Ashe Stadium, as well as for our viewers around the world. Minna Hill, Darian, Faith, D, Claire, in Seattle, St. Louis, Texas, Johannesburg, New Zealand, all getting amped up for what could be the deciding game for Kaney Shikori. Or will Stan Vavrenka make Japan's number one go to a fifth set for a second straight round? And don't forget Stan from Hussein and Kay from Shimane. They're also excited representing their respective hometowns. Tremendous stuff here in the quarterfinals. That one's going to hurt. That is going to hurt, but you remember how the second, or the sorry, the third set tiebreaker went. We went a stretch of like six points. It was four, five, or six points where the server didn't win one. So True. by no means is that tiebreaker over for Nishikori. But Bob Franca, look at the way he's carrying himself. Back is a little straighter. A little more swagger. been confident on serve this set. <laughs> Without question. <laughs> Just to illustrate that point and why we may be moving quickly Four, to a deciding zero. fifth set. 26 of 29 points in this set for Stan from the line. When it's mattered most, particularly in this set, to stay in the tournament, he has literally stood up tall. Stand and deliver. Always positive, always believing, Michael Chang. Well, you have to be, though. Yeah. What course. else are you going to do out there? I mean, when you walk out on the court, you've got what you've got. It's time to be positive and battle through. And in case Kay looks, looks over, and if he sees Michael hanging his head, <laughs> oh boy, there'll be words. He needs to draw off that positivity. Gets one of the mini breaks back. Oh. After a four-love start, a couple points to Nishikori. Swap ends, and let's continue the drama. 
Again, a spot in the semifinals at stake. If you're just joining us or if you're staying up late and you've drifted off for a moment, first of all, wake up. Come on. Stay with us because this is going to be exciting either way. Vavrenka or Nishikori will move through. The first member of the Final Four in New York to take on either world number one, Novak Djokovic, who has moved through without dropping a set, or the eight seed, Andy Murray, in the top half of the men's draw. Quarterfinals three and four tomorrow. Berdic and Cilic, Malfi and Federer. Anything we've learned today, Taylor, no lead is insurmountable. Four, three. The momentum swings in this match have been, well, painful, I guess, for the <laughs> for the view of for for the players' box, but for us it's been fun. I always like to see those big momentum swings. Vavrenko with an extra challenge in the tiebreak has three to his credit and will lose another. Challenged early in the set and lost out. He'll have a second serve. Oh, it just skips off the paint. A little acceleration and Vavrenko is going to challenge again. Right near Salah. Ball is called in. So what were you saying, a four love up? I said things were going Bob Rinka's <laughs> way, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, Swagger might be evaporating. It was spot on. There was no doubt that it picked up some speed on the paint. And suddenly that Swagger has started to come a little more four, introverted. Four. Bob Rinka has one challenge remaining. Play smart. He was doing that a lot against Robredo. And I think I, it could mean play smart, or it could mean stay mentally tough. Probably a combo platter. Thank you. Took a risk. He went for the line to Nishikori. Six five. Vavrinka. They can't find any of the painted surface that would give him the point. So Vavrenka. Point from a fifth set. Thank you. Oh. And Manfo 
final set, Vavrinka. It's come down to one. Seven, six. The final four Two awaits the winner of the fifth set in New York. Many hallmarks to the excitement that is major tennis and the events that unfold. Melbourne, Australia, Paris, France, London, England, and New York, New York. Each city and their respective slams seems to have the characteristics of that town. The slams sort of finding the vibe. Laid back Australia with its appreciation of sports, art and culture, and a more muted appreciation in Paris, Wimbledon, Final tradition. Slams. New York City, rocking and boisterous. Thank you. Now well, the fans in the day session, Arthur Ashe Stadium being treated as one set is all that remains between Stan Wawrinka and Kei Nishikori for a chance to move through to the semifinals. World number 11, Kei Nishikori, 10th seed here in New York. 38-9 on the year. Two titles to his credit, having amassed five in his career. Champion of Memphis and Barcelona. Back in 2008, made his U.S. Open debut and reached the round of 16. And everything seemed to be looking up and bright for Kei Nishikori. But over the course of his career, putting together a calendar season, at full health and fitness, competition, that has eluded him. As has much success and moving late into 14, the latter stages of the draws at major tournaments. Never reached a semifinal at a major. In fact, just one quarterfinal prior. two years ago at the Australian Open. So it's 14. a large swing for Kei Nishikori to try to finish 2014 with a couple of round of 16 appearances at the Australian Open in Wimbledon, now in the quarterfinals of the US Open, trying to win his second consecutive five-set match. And it'll say something if he's able to pull it off, Taylor Dent, being able to get past Milos Raonic, which is a match that many people have written him off early in the stages of the evening that pushed into 2.26 a.m and then do it again today against Stan Wawrinka. Wow. It would be impressive. It would be a huge mental effort on, on Kay's part. And uh, on Wawrinka's end, I just think this is the biggest improvement Magnus Norman has made with Wawrinka is the mental toughness aspect. For the match, unforced errors are at 68 for Vavrinka. That's almost half of the points, the total points that Kay has won. He's at 146 before the, uh, the, fi the fifth set started. If you would have asked Stan and told Stan those stats before Magnus Norman, he would have been upset. He would have been negative. He would have gone in the tank. On, yeah, exactly. All over himself. And now he's just positive outburst. I mean, that is mental toughness if I've ever seen it. And he alluded to in the last set, just in the latter stages, pointing to his temple saying, ah, I'm strong here. I'm strong between the ears. Yeah, that's going to win me the match because he's not executing phenomenally today. Another, come on. I mean, seemingly meaningless point early in the fifth <laughs> set and you get a come on. And the ability to hold off Nishikori in the tie break in set number four when he could have faltered a bit because of the fact he had been serving so well. Just worth reiterating that through the six games needed by Vavrenka to hold to get to the tie break, he only lost a total of three points. Yeah. And it just goes back to the same thing. You know, we were talking about what makes, what ingredients make a great player. And Stan has become a great player, not just a good player, with that one extra ingredient. Every ingredient is so powerful. You know, he's got the movement. He's always had the movement. He's got the backhand. 
got the forehand, got the serve, and now you add in a little mental toughness, and he's, he's one of the guys to beat now. I saw it first, I would reckon, for most people in that final in Melbourne. You can even go back actually to the quarterfinals when he beat Djokovic, then got past Burdick, but then taking on Nadal, who many people had already started engraving his name on the trophy and thinking, well, there's major title number 14. Granted, Nadal was not at his best physically, but for Vavrenka to hold up under the duress of playing in his first major final and walk away with a title, that was a big step. Ultimately getting off to a 13-match win streak to start the year. So a hold for one all is Nishikori. He hasn't allowed himself to falter or waver today either. And a credit to him and his ability under the tutelage of Michael Chang to himself remain tough between the years when he had every excuse available to him to be, well, just not at his best today after the Raonic match. But you know it firsthand, this guy's not a quitter, and he certainly is not one to put in just 60, 70, 80% effort. Fifty long. Come on. Uh, Stan trying to motivate himself, realizing the magnitude of what this third game could mean. It could turn on a hinge. If he can find a way to seize the lead this early. Bold ball striking from Nishikori. Facing break point. And you could see Stan was just not willing to miss that point. He's like, I'm going to make Nishikori beat me. And Nishikori came up, with, came up with the shots. He opened up the court so well to Stan's forehand, then just took the ball early on the backhand and continued the onslaught. Still has a threat against his serve. He must deal with. Goodness, the racket head speed, the acceleration. Yeah, the K is so quick through the point of contact. And you can see, because of that quickness, he's able to keep the ball aggressive and land it so short in the court, just a couple feet past the service line, creating massive width. Oh! 
Kiko is around the corner on the right baseline. Ball is called They reset the challenge numbers in the fifth set, and Nishikori wants a look at it. Oh, Stan is not going to be happy. He was already complaining. He took too long. It does raise an interesting point. The call <laughs> overturned, and it made good, but there is a time rule. Well, it's actually not a time rule. It's a behavioral rule. You have to be engaged either with the ball mark or the chair umpire. Kay was not. He turned around. Well, important that they'll replay the point because if it had been long and the challenge had not overruled it, it would be break point for Vavrenka once again. Instead, they'll replay Deuce. And a momentary pause by Vavrenka, who can't allow himself to be distracted. I was just going to say, we're going to get another chance to see how tough Vavrenka is right here, because that is definitely some adversity. sign Magnus Norman would even approve a loose Stan Wawrinka is better than a tense one will smile and chatter to the fans just behind the baseline obviously doesn't want to lose focus here and surrender any chance for trying to grab the upper hand but instead of holding and going away right back ready to return Nice stuff. And good start. As Reza from Canberra says, good on you, mates. This is quality tennis in New York. Seven oh two PM on Wednesday, September third. That means in Tokyo. It's now already Thursday. Eight oh two AM in Zurich. Also Tuesday, just after one AM. You know both nations are sitting on the edge of their seat, as we imagine you tennis fan are too. Wherever you're watching, this has turned into a doozy. And we certainly hope this fifth set pays off in as exciting fashion as the match has itself. Alongside Taylor Dent, Kevin Skinner here with you for our U.S. Open coverage that extends from day now into night. Bob Renka had his chances in the third game to try to grab the lead. Couldn't convert on two break points, and he's serving to try to level the score line. Fifth set tiebreak would be fun. Finish this one off. Would seem fitting, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be nice. It would be interesting to see how things progress, though, for Kane Ishikori. How those legs respond now. As we are 10 minutes shy of his second consecutive four-hour match. I think mentally now he can overcome whatever fatigue he's feeling. I mean, it doesn't. he's not playing any of the other slams. He's the only one that does a tiebreaker in the fifth. He's got to hold four more times. And he's home. Four more games he's got to really put a big effort out in. And there's a lot of adrenaline surging here inside Arthur Ashe Stadium as well to give him a bit of a pep in his step, if you will. We've talked about it before through the course of what's been now 10 days of this final major of the year and how the dynamic of this city really influences this tournament, but also the change from day to night. The lights come on. Literally, the electricity starts to surge. 
but where Nishikori can benefit from the crowd, so can Vavrinka. It's been pretty evenly matched as far as the support for both. Full team. They just hope one doesn't start to just fold up tense and say, I've put in my best effort, but it's not going to be enough. And so far, it doesn't disappoint. Even and Josh Greenwood Malika. chimes in with what Two great tennis up. this is. A 10 out of 10 match. All right. We love your enthusiasm, Josh. USOpen.org. It's your opportunity to catch up on things as they unfold. If you can't stay up late, if you are in Zurich at 1.05 a.m. or if you're in Tokyo just waking up and you want to see highlights from this tournament, just go to USOpen.org, click on video and photos. And voila. Low 50. New weapon of choice for Nishikori. Not content with the current stick. He'll go to another. Talking back there, and he's in the uh, same corner as his coach, Magnus Norman, obviously venting some frustration. Can't really blame him. That was his 71st unforced error. 13. Two break points in game three could not convert. How does he fare on break point number three? Credit to Nishikori yes. for a solid answer under pressure. Yeah, Vavrenka in his match against Simon Bredo that went four sets, he had 58 on four stairs against 75 winners. That high number in the unforced error department, maybe not totally indicative. Mm. A potential pitfall for the Swiss, but then again, maybe it is. <laughs> Nishikori really trying to get some man. distance Nishikori. between Vavrenka and the baseline, trying to push him further and further back. And again, Nishikori fends off the advances of Stan Vavrenka to move out in front and the decider. It's got to be a tough position to be in. Think of it, you're the USTA. You've scheduled both number ones, each in men's and women's tennis in the night session. There's a lot of fans in the day session, ticket holders that started this match and are going to stay through its conclusion. That means things will be pushed back. And yet, how can you not want to see how this plays out. If you're a tennis fan, 
You're locked in. You know what? It was a quick night last night. Got to balance it out. Have another late one tonight. Look at you, Mr. Silverlining. Yeah. Always thinking positive. Don't want these staffers at the USGA <laughs> to get too much sleep. They put in a late one the night before. Both number ones will have to wait. Japan's number one. This is the Swiss number two, currently locked in a dogfight. Seventeen times Vavrenka has motored a serve past Nishikori without any response. Fast is at 138 miles per hour. That one 14 miles slower. Still very effective. And Vavrenka not dismayed at his inability to convert any of the three break points he's had in the set. In fact, from the line, if he can get one of those breaks, he looks magnificent. 12 of 14 in this set in his three holds. And that picks up where he left off in set number four, where he only lost three points on serve in his six holds. All the more reason Kei Nishikori is desperate to hold each time he steps up to put himself to the lead. Every so often a sense of urgency from Nishikori. He doesn't betray a lot emotionally. No histrionics on the court. He's flashed a couple of smiles. will be amused at times, but all in all plays very even, keeled, and calm. Tough to say it's desperation time, but he has to know that there is going to be pressure applied once more by Vavrenka. He's only served three times, and two of those three previous service games, he's been under duress. So tough for Vavrinka to get over there and hit that chip backhand to Nishikori's forehand. He really has to take a lot of chance, a lot of risk, keeping it close to either the baseline or the sideline. Anything hanging in the middle has just been absolutely punished by Nishikori.
<laughs> Nishi Corey tries the drop shot Nishikori just to keep Vavrenka honest, and it almost got him. But no damage awesome. done as we continue on as the sun sets in New York City. Over now four and a half sets. Just eight points the difference between these two. Very evenly matched. The first two encounters weren't so in 2012. Stan Vavrenka, 6'4", 6'3", in their first meeting, which occurred in Buenos Aires, and later in the year at the Masters 1000 event in Cincinnati, 6'3", 6'3". Kei Nishikori is a far different player, but as is Stan Vavrenka, both finding career-high moments and career years in 2014. Vavrenka 12 of 14 from the line in this fifth set. Whether or not Bob Renka can maintain that incredible output, he doesn't seem at all bothered. Magnus Norman says, just like we practice, rear back and fire. mentioned before how big of a deal the serve was for Kane Nishikori and how much it helps Vavrenko when he's having those good serving days. If you take the aces out of play, and this isn't even the unreturnables, just the aces, Vavrenka's winners to unforced errors ratio goes a negative 24 and K's goes to a negative 14. Such a massive edge for Vavrenka in that Vavrenka. department. Yeah, it's something to rely on. Just free points that Kenny Four really can't always rely on. But for Vavrenka, it is something that he uses to help sort of inform his mental aspect, how well he's going to be able to compete. And that just goes to show you how much better Kay has been from the baseline throughout the course of this whole match. A couple minutes shy of 7.30 p.m. in Queens, one of the five boroughs that makes up New York City. Four hours and eight minutes to the fifth set of this quarterfinal. That means that Stan Wawrinka, through the four matches that he's played, yes, four matches played, including this one against Nishikori, he's been on court for 12 hours. I make that point, of course, because Wawrinka got a walkover. He didn't have to play one extra match, and still, with Kei Nishikori his, as his opposition tonight, and the four-hour 19 match he had with Raonic, Nishikori has only spent an extra hour and 27 minutes on court this event. And with a surge of adrenaline and realizing the finish line is so close, the only major that has a fifth set tie break, you imagine those legs feel pretty fine right now. It's all up between the ears and execution. Oh. 
Oh, Sly had to hit it perfect, and he does. Nishi Corey won't say it out loud, but you got to be thinking in his mind. He's looking over at Vavrenka to say, "Okay, catch me if you can." Kaini Shikori working with Michael Chang. Finding great success, including two titles this year. Quarterfinal at the U.S. Open. At 4 hours 11 minutes, this isn't even going to get close to the longest match. Not yet. It doesn't even surpass the round of 16 encounter Nishikori had with Milos Raonic. Just eight minutes off that mark. But kind of fitting that Nishikori is in this contest, and Michael Chang is courtside. The longest U.S. Open men's match in history. 1992 semifinal. Five hours, 25 minutes between Stefan Edberg, who defeated Michael Chang. Vavrenka serving to stay in New York City. And with all the conversation about both of these men and what they've had to endure to get to this point so late in the fifth set and the mental toughness and fortitude it takes. Nishikori has to feel he's got a feather in his cap and having Michael Chang nearby. 15, 15. Oh! Oh! 15 -0. Just the fifth point that Vavrenka has lost on serve in this set, and you can understand if a little bit of the walls closing in scenario starts to feel. What does Vavrenka have as far as being able to distance himself from negative thoughts and pressure? Thank you. Please. That just might be your answer. Vavrenka's eighth double fault gives Nishikori match point. 15 40. Last year, Stan Wawrinka reached his first major semifinal here in New York. He hands the reins over to Kei Nishikori in 2014 as Japan's top player makes it two in a row, going the distance of five sets and finds his way to the last four at the U.S. Open.
Well, Taylor, anticlimactic for Vavrinka fans and elation for Nishikori because of the opportunity before him to pull off this sort of victory in four hours and 15 minutes after enduring a 2.26 a.m. finish to his four-hour and 19-minute match against Raonic. Really showing what the young man from Japan is made of. So tough. It's just so impressive. He came out in that first set, and all credit to Stan. Look, what a gentleman, what a sportsman. Really had a pretty rough day with 78 unforced errors, but fought the whole time. But back to K, first set looked done. I, I thought it's going to be a rout for Vavrinka. But slowly but surely, Stan wasn't able to execute well enough to put K aside. And then he started to find his en energy, started to get some adrenaline going, execution going, and at the end of the day, just simply played better than Vavrinka. Yeah, there's something about just a, a nice little rush of adrenaline that can kind of get you over the hump. And if he was feeling it, it looked like it early, but he certainly responded when he needed to late. And after taking a two set to one lead, losing the fourth set in a tie break, he wasn't discouraged and he finds his way to victory lane.